Hi, I'm Mr. Buckingham, and this video is on proteins. So proteins are pretty large molecules that have a unique function, and they have a unique structure. And if that structure is at all compromised, then it won't be able to form its function. So this protein is a motor protein, and is pretty funky, and moves different molecules uh, to other parts of our cell. So proteins are not just for our muscles. They make up a huge portion of our bodies, our tissues, our organs, even our skin has a lot of protein, our um, hair has some proteins and um, are absolutely essential to our bodies. So in this video we'll talk about the structure of proteins and the, the base unit structure is going to be amino acids and those amino acids when bonded together are going to form a polypeptide then we're going to talk about protein folding, and there are four levels of protein folding. The primary level is going to be the polypeptide, which is going to form peptide bonds. The secondary folding structure is going to form helices, alpha helices, and beta pleated sheets through hydrogen bonding. And the tertiary structure is going to uh, bond with different R groups based off of what uh, types of bonds and what type of elements are in that R group. And the fourth one, the quaternary, is going to uh, be different peptide bonds forming together. Or, sorry, different polypeptides bonding together. So proteins, again, they're going to be made by, or the subunit, amino acids. So amino acids have uh, unique structures to them, but there are certain subunits that are the same of an amino acid. So we definitely need 20 amino acids in our body, and we can get them through plants, but we can't get them from one source of plants. So we need uh, beans and other legumes, and we also need corn and other grains put together in order to have a complete balanced diet of all the amino acids, all of the 20 essential amino acids. Uh, so I'm kind of vegetarian, a little bit lazy vegetarian, uh, so I eat a lot of beans and rice in order to get those 20 complete amino acids. And I also have what's called Patricia Bragg's uh, essential amino acids, uh, it's like a soy sauce, which is really good and then just is full of uh, the different amino acids that we need. So every amino acid has uh, the same backbone, let's say. And in the backbone, there is a carboxyl group. So each side has a COOH. Each amino acid has an alpha group. So it's going to be a central carbon with a hydrogen bond. And then each amino acid is also going to have an amino group, so NH2 on it. So that you should be able to identify if you see some really confusing looking um, molecules. If you can identify these three parts in the head of the amino acid, you should be just fine. And then each amino acid is going to have a unique R group. And the R group is going to be different for each amino acid. And that means it's going to behave a little bit different. And it's going to bond with other amino acids and it's going to tell which shape the protein is actually going to be. So these common amino acids, lysine, glutamine, and tyrosine, they will start to bond together. And the first, the primary uh, structure of protein folding is just going to be the bonds of the different amino acids together in a chain. So the, tyros the lysine is going to bond to the tyrosine and the tyrosine is gonna bond to the glutamine and so on and so on. And that unique order is going to mean that that is going to be a certain type of protein. So if we change this order, that means it could potentially be a completely different protein. When the amino acids come together, they're going to go through a dehydration synthesis. And we'll notice that the, the OH group and the, the hydrogen is going to bond together and they're going to actually leave. In order for water to leave, that means it's going to be dehydration, and then it's going to form what's called a peptide bond. So the peptide bonds together, if there are many of them, it's going to be called a polypeptide chain. It's just a bunch of amino acids that have been dehydrated and bonded together. So this is a picture of many of those amino acids together and the peptide bond. 
So these are the different types of R groups, and you can see they're all different, and they will act differently based off of their if they're non-polar, so they are not going to like to be in water. Polar, so they will like to be in water, they'll easily dissolvable, or they're gonna be electrically charged uh, side chains. So we've gone through amino acids, the subunit, the monomer, for proteins then if they're going to be bonded together through dehydration synthesis it's going to be called peptide bonding and this is going to be a poly polypeptide and then we're going to talk about how the folded protein actually becomes a 3d structure so again this is the primary structure this is the polypeptide and it matters which amino acid bonds to the next one so then the secondary structure is going to be what's called beta pleated sheet or an alpha helix. Helix is just going to be a wound structure. And that is due to hydrogen bonds or hydrogen bonding. So that's the, the first part of its 3D structure. And then this is where the R groups start to come into play. So R group interactions depending on the order of the different amino acids is going to mean that there's going to be different, slightly different interactions between those uh, R groups and where they actually occur. So we can have ionic bonding between looks like this oxygen and amino group. We could have disulfide bridge uh, between uh, R groups that contain sulfur in them. And disulfide bridge uh, bonds are actually in your hair so they're responsible for curly hair they're responsible for wavy hair and when you go to get a perm or if you ever curl your hair uh, you're actually breaking some of those disulfide bonds and then your hair is able to reorder itself and then we have hydrophobic interactions between certain r groups and van der waals interactions and then we have some more hydrogen bond interactions and that's really when the the polypeptide is starting to become a 3D structure. And then lastly, the quaternary structure is going to be multiple polypeptides together. So you can see each one of these color, this orange, green, magenta, purple, uh, those are all different polypeptides and then they are gonna start to come together. And then just a little review so we have the primary structure, which is going to just be peptide bonds We're going to, in the order of the different amino acids. The secondary structure is going to be the alpha helix and beta pleated sheets. The tertiary structure is going to be the, diff, the four different types of bonding. And then the quaternary structure is the uh, multiple different polypeptides now coming together to form a big protein. So go ahead and fill in the empty boxes and that's it. Thanks for watching.